Hey, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com and today guys we are doing this little stool makeover. <laughs> this is really cute. A blogger friend had given this to me. It was her mother-in-law's. Her mother-in-law had reupholstered it years ago and so she's passing it on to me. Anyway, it's got some repairs that need to be made so we're going to do that. We're going to do some painting and we're going to do some new fabric and this is a really simple easy project and I'm going to show you how to do this, how to get started with your very first project, your very first reupholster project. <laughs> so let's jump into this project right now and this is being sponsored by Aero Fastener. We're going to use some of their tools and we're going to use some sunflower fabric. So you just want to do for step one, a thorough inspection of your piece of furniture to make sure that you know exactly what tools you're going to need and if there's any problems or any repairs that have to be made before you get started. We know that we need the Aero Fastener T50. We're going to use some staples, the T50 3 8 inch staples. We also need a staple lifter, some wood glue, a power drill, or you can also use a screwdriver, that's fine, and some clamps. For the complete list of everything that I use for this project, find the link to the blog post down below. So we're going to go ahead and remove this top, the reupholstered top. Here's a little tip. Make sure you put all of your hardware in a plastic baggie because I can tell you I am notorious for losing at least one screw. <laughs> We're actually going to repair this first and then once the glue has set after we have clamped it then we're going to go back and wipe it down. I'm going to go ahead and put some wood glue here but before I do that over on this side it looks like there is one of these wooden dowels that is sticking out. So we're going to just use a very carefully we're just going to try to cut this down just a little bit just to make it smooth or you know you could use some sandpaper or maybe a sander but Let's just go ahead and see if we could just get this cut down a little. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to be able to get a nice tight fit once we put the glue in this joint. All right, so when we put this back on, yeah, that's a much better fit. I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue here in this hole and then spread some here. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same and anything that seeps out we can just wipe it up. Now we can set this piece on here and I'm sure we're going to get a lot of seepage. Alright, it's a lot of seepage. So let's go ahead and clamp this, clean up this excess glue, and then let this dry. I had to switch my clamps to something a little bit wider and it just fits. Perfect. Alright, so we're going to make that tight and we're going to do the same for the other side. When you're using wood glue, make sure you wipe up any spills because if you're painting projects, you don't want to have to go back with a knife and get all that dried wood glue. And if you're staining something, it's going to be nearly impossible to stain over the wood glue. So clean it up with a wet towel and just get all those little drips. And we're not going to worry about this part too much because we can also use a little bit of wood filler there before we paint this. So while the wood is drying, we're going to go ahead and start removing these tacks and staples and see what we're working with underneath here. You don't have to use new uh, batting or stuffing or new cushions. If it's in good condition, you can reuse the same ones because a lot of times it will increase your cost if you have to buy new cushions. Now, if you know where the furniture comes from, it's not really that big of a deal to use the old cushions, but if you get it from the thrift store, sometimes that stuff can just stink. So if you want, you can always re reupholster it with new stuff. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece of wood out and this is the old batting inside. It's got some old fabric here. We're gonna replace all of this and we're gonna go a little bit thicker so we have a little bit more padding on the stool. When you're doing reupholstering projects, it's best not to throw this away until you've cut your new fabric. Let's go ahead and remove these, these clamps here and check to make sure that our wood is pretty good. If you remember, this was a side that was broken. You see a little bit of a crack here, but that's okay. We could actually fill in some of this with wood filler right here. You see we've got some cracked wood, but that's okay. We're going to do some wood filler there, but this side looks pretty good. So now that we have our batting cut out, we have the corners cut at an angle so that we could reduce some of the bulk. I've started to 
put some staples here just to, you know, just make sure that this is going to be the right amount of batting that's left. But we can go ahead and use our stapler, our T50 from Aero Fastener. So to load your Aero Fastener T50, you can use any of the staples. We're going to use 3 8 inch because they're pretty long, but not too long. So they'll go into the wood. We're going to open up the back here, unhook it, pull it out. And then we're going to load the staples with the sharp pointy ends facing down. Stick it all the way in there. And we should be able to push this in and rehook it. And now we've got staples. And just pull it tight and start stapling. I like to staple probably like every three or four inches. You don't have to staple it so much because there's going to be more staples here as we put the lining in and then we have to put the fabric, the fabric over top of this. When we get to the corners here, we just have to reduce some of this bulk because we don't want this to be too bulky. And we could probably trim this down just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Add a few. And also too, if you are someone that doesn't have a good strong grip, Aero Fastener does make some staplers where instead of having to squeeze, all you have to do is push. I'm using the T50, but they have a variety of other staplers that, you know, if you just don't have strong hands or if you have arthritis, any sort of hand grip problems, you should be able to find a product that'll work for you. We'll get the last corner here, put a few staples in. And let's go ahead and just trim a little bit of this extra bulk from the back here. And when we flip it over, we should have a nice surface. And now you don't have to use a lining fabric. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use a lining fabric because it just looks nicer. So I've got some of this fabric here that is actually kind of perfect here. I just happened to find it in my stash, which there's nothing like finding what you need in your stash. So now that we have a piece that's cut to approximately two, two and a half inches wider than our chair, we can go ahead and start putting this together. Now, let me tell you, whenever you're reupholstering something, and this is what I learned in my upholstery class, you always want to find the, the center. Now this doesn't really matter as much because it's just a lining fabric, but we still want it to be nice and tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to find approximately the center this is the center, and we're going to put one staple here. Then we're just going to start pulling this a little tight. And this fabric looks like it kind of stretches a little bit. So we're going to get a little bit of stretch here. But I'm just going to pull that tight. I'm going to pull it tight on this end as well. So we're going to pull here tight at the top, put a single staple there, and then start pulling towards the corners, and then putting a staple there. We're going to do the same over here, and you always want to save your corners for last. So however you need to rotate this in order to get a good grasp on it, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to pull it down towards the corners, and then we're going to put one single staple in the middle and we'll start pulling towards that corner. And again, we're going to save our corners for last. So we're going to go over here and pull a little tight. Leaving these, I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to make sure I pull this tight so that it's snug and I'm going to put one single staple here in the middle. And again, I'll start pulling towards the corners. All right, so you see that we've got a pretty tight fit here. Now we just have to secure these corners. I'm just going to cut a little bit of triangle fabric here out. This is just excess fabric that we really don't need. We don't want to make the corners so bulky. And if we pull that tight right here in the middle, we should be able to fold the rest of it onto itself. 
And sometimes what you can do is just flip it over, check to make sure you've got a nice corner. That looks pretty good. And then we can staple that with a few staples. Let's just do two, because we're gonna have more staples here when we put on the real fabric. So once all the corners have been stapled into place, we're gonna go ahead and just remove the excess fabric here from the back. We probably need one more here. So let's go ahead and just add a couple more, pulling it tight just to make sure it's secure. Okay, so this looks actually pretty good. It feels like it's got a little bit more uh, cushioning in there from the original. This is the fabric that we're using. My mom is redoing her bedroom and she loves sunflowers. So we're gonna do sunflower fabric. What we've done is we've cut this piece out in order to center this sunflower in the middle of this stool. And if you're using a pattern that has an up and a down, like this one clearly does, make sure that you account for that. What I wanna do is I wanna fold it so that this is the center of my fabric. So I'm just gonna fold this over and mark that center. So let's see, let's fold it right here. And then I'm just gonna notch the bottom of the fabric with a little V on the corner. And when I open it up, now I know that that's the center of my fabric, okay? So that's where we need to make sure that it's aligned is with the center of this stool. You will need a tape measure and in upholstery a lot of times you will wanna find the center of whatever it is that you're working on. So this, this little stool here is 16 inches. So we're gonna find the center at eight inches and just put a little mark here. And now let's just go ahead and flip it over. And we're gonna to try to line that up right here in the center. So I know I wanna be here. I'm just gonna lay that right on top. And we wanna make sure that this V right here is lined up with the center here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put one staple right here at the center. So we can go ahead up here, pull it tight, and we're gonna put another center staple right here. And again, we're pulling that tight because we don't want that to move. All right, so when we turn it over, we see that we do have our sunflower here in the middle and we can start pulling this into position and getting this nice and straight and even. So now that we have the center staples here, we can start pulling out to the corners and getting everything nice and tight and then making sure that it's centered, right? We don't want it to be crooked. So I'm gonna staple these sides in. And I'm gonna check this one too. Make sure that it's tight. So now that we have all four center pieces stapled in place, it's not gonna move and shift, we can start pulling to the corners and getting this thing really, really tight. Again, leaving the corners for last and just staple this into place. And we can, don't worry about getting so close, we can go back and staple and fill in, but right now we just wanna secure it. This looks pretty good, now let's pull on this one and we're gonna to pull towards the corner. Put one staple there. But let's flip it over and just have a look. This looks pretty good. It looks straight to me and it doesn't have any gaps. And one thing that you should do, again, with your fabric is try to pinch it. If you can't pinch this fabric when you're going like this, that means it's tight enough. And if you can pinch it, that means you need to go back over it. So I cheated a little bit yesterday and a friend of mine called <laughs> and while she called and distracted me, I went ahead and stapled and did three of the corners and left one so that I could show you exactly how to do it. I'm just cutting off a little bit of a triangle here because I know this is gonna be extra fabric. So I'm gonna trim that. So what I like to do to start at the corner is I like to pull it nice and tight here in the center. And then you're gonna hold it with your thumb, but you're gonna fold the fabric over, making sure that you're creating nice, neat, flat folds. And if you're pulling it tight, you should be able to start seeing these folds take place right there. Now you can go ahead and staple that, 
But just keep in mind that you may have to take out some of your staples if you find that, oh, maybe I, maybe I needed to do a little bit more folding before I stapled. When you're working the corners, you always want to pull any excess fabric to the corner. So there's a little bit of excess fabric here, so I'm going to pull this tight to the corners and I'm going to make sure that I'm folding over. So I'm going to fold, I'm going to fold, and just pull it tight, tight and flat. And if you need to take it out and start over, you can do that, not a big deal. But the main thing is that you're creating folds to make everything nice and neat. So let's go ahead and staple that. And if we turn this over, that looks like a pretty good corner. It looks really good, actually. And then of course we want a couple more staples, a few more staples here, and trying to get this as flat as possible. We can trim some of that away, but we're going to do a few more staples. All right, that looks pretty secure. Now we can go ahead and just trim away the excess fabric. When I flip it over and do that little pinch test, I actually can't pinch any of the fabric. So that tells me that it's nice and tight, it's secure, it looks pretty even. Down here at the bottom, it might be a little bit off, but I think just, you know, in looking at it, it's not that big of a deal. I think it's got enough of a pattern on there that it's not so obvious. We got a piece of lining fabric here to cover this up, and this is the same fabric that I used to cover it underneath of the sunflower sap fabric. So what we're gonna do is just fold these sides under. We wanna make sure that we're covering up these raw edges here, just to give it a nice clean appearance, because remember, this stool actually has a top that lifts up. So we want this to look nice, attractive, and I'm just gonna fit this on here as best as I can. Get it started. There's not enough furniture tacks here, and because I have the extra padding underneath here, some of the tacks are not going in at the corner where there's a lot of fabric. So thankfully I found these little screws. They actually are black, so they'll blend right in with the other tacks. And I'm just gonna secure this at the corner into the wood. And they're not long enough to go through, so that's just gonna hold the fabric in there, and we can do one tack here, one tack here. I think we have enough tacks. So let's take a look at this. It actually looks pretty good. So when we flip this over, we have all the raw edges covered up. Now remember, we put a little bit of wood filler here and there's some 220 grit sandpaper. We let that dry and then we just sand that smooth. When cleaning furniture, I usually recommend either using vinegar and water or simple green. Sometimes I will take a cleaning towel like this. If it doesn't seem like it's real dirty, I'll just use a cleaning towel and wipe it down like this. And once it's clean, then you can start painting. But the main thing is that you just wanna make sure that there's no oil, no dirt, anything that could affect the quality of the paint sticking to the wood. Now, when I'm painting furniture, I usually like to flip it over and start from the bottom up. And the reason why is because you wanna be able to see all of these little spots that you're not gonna see when the furniture is standing upright. So flip it over and start from the bottom. Make sure that you turn it, rotate it if you can, get all the sides, and once that's dry, then we'll flip it over. But for now, let's go ahead and get our paint ready. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on my brush. I don't wanna overload it and just start painting around the legs here. Now, if you put too much paint on your paintbrush, you're gonna get a lot of drips and spills and things like that. So don't, don't go crazy on it. And just remember, with your first coat, it's not gonna look that great with your first coat. Now, this is the first time that I've ever used this paint. It's a little thicker than what I generally like, but this is the only paint that I had access to. <laughs> I didn't have time to order any other any other paint. But for now, this is gonna work. And we're gonna do two coats. So keep the first coat light and just know that you can always go over it with one or two more coats. Now, once the first coat of paint dries, you wanna come back and do a second coat because it's gonna give it a lot more coverage. And if you notice that your paint's getting a little thick, just add a little bit of water to it and it should thin out 
you won't see as many brush strokes and you should be able to get a really smooth finish. So now that we've painted the body, we're going to just do a little bit of paint on the inside here along the edge because we're going to put some paper, scrapbook paper here, and we want to make sure that any of the brown edges aren't showing through. So we're just going to put a little bit of paint here, let that dry, and then add the paper. I want to jump in here real quick and tell you that there are four instances where you should use primer if you have stains bleeding silicone or really dark furniture and i won't go through them in detail but i can tell you definitely have this kills original in your toolbox <laughs> in this case there was some staining on the bottom that went right through the coat of paint and the only thing that was going to block that was a spray primer so have this in your toolbox and also if you want to learn more about bleeding through and covering up silicone and dark furniture down below, there is a link for 10 common furniture painting mistakes. You can look at that post and get a little bit more information about when you will need to use primer. Now we're gonna put some scrapbook paper in here and I've gone ahead and cut out the little squares here at the corner so that it could fit in there nicely. We're gonna use some of this Mod Podge. This is not only gonna secure this to the base, but we can also make this waterproof. So set these pieces of paper in here. And I'm going to use this brayer to press it down. All right, now we're going to go over it with another layer of Mod Podge to seal it. Now we need to finish off the paint. Now, this isn't something that I do every single time that I paint furniture. Sometimes I will leave it with just two or three coats. But one thing you may not be able to see here is that Oftentimes with chalk paint, you will see the brush strokes and some people don't like that. But I'll show you how to smooth this out a little bit. And also if you wanna get a distressed look, I'll show you how to do that. We're not gonna do that on here cause that's not the look I'm going for, but I will show you how to do that. But what we're gonna do is take some sandpaper. Now this sandpaper, I'm not even sure what finish this is, but this is actually, and I'll have to leave this down below in the comments. If you're gonna distress, you can use a 220 grit sandpaper. This is actually even more fine than 220 grit. And I like that because it doesn't take off any of the paint that's gonna make it look distressed, but it does smooth it out. So I'm gonna take my glove off for this. So with this paint right here, you see it's got some texture. It feels a little rough and we could leave this as is, but what I'm gonna do is take this sandpaper and just very carefully in circles, I'm just gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but it's flaking away. And what it's actually doing is smoothing this paint out. So it feels real smooth, like baby butt smooth right here. And you see it's on my finger. Over here, it still feels a little rough. Still feels a little rough. And I'm just gonna keep going very gentle, very, very gentle. When you're going around feet, you gotta be careful because these are usually curved. I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but I'm just gonna run this over and just smooth out any little edges there without distressing it. But again, if you want this edge to be shown, if you want some of this wood to come through, sand it a little bit harder so you'll start seeing some of that edge coming through. But again, that's not the look we're going for. So now that we've sanded this down to get really smooth, we're gonna add a little bit of wax. Now you could use a top coat for this, but it actually may ch change the, the pink color to yellow. So definitely look up there in the corner, look at the video on 10 common furniture painting mistakes and how to prevent them and fix them. But instead of doing a top coat, we're gonna use a wax. And the one that I'm using here is called uh, Fides and Sons. I think it's Fides. It's a wax polish and it's clear. So we're gonna use this just to give this some shine. And I'm gonna put some on a cloth here. I'm not gonna overload it and just wipe on a coat. And you'll start to see the, the paint darkening up a little bit. We're not gonna buff this in just yet. We're just gonna put some on there. We're not gonna overload it coat it and let it sit for a few minutes and then we're going to come back and buff it. This is going to give us a nice shine and a nice feel to the paint. A lot of times with chalk paint, it feels really, really dry. Not dry, but just really flat. It doesn't have any shine to it. And some of the paints do actually have a top coat built in, but 
a lot of the chalky base paints do not have any sort of top coat built in. So you need to add a top coat to protect it. So we're just gonna add a little coat of wax here, go around, let it dry a little, and then we're gonna come back and buff it. Now in terms of coats, you could probably do two coats on this and that would be enough. And if you're using this for a, well, if you're painting a piece that's gonna get a lot of traffic, I would say do three coats of wax and let it thoroughly dry in between, probably maybe a couple, couple of hours or so in between coats. We've let this set on here for maybe a couple minutes. And now we're gonna take a clean part of the towel. This is just a lint-free towel. And we're just gonna buff it. And when you first go over it, it's gonna feel like it's giving you a little bit of problems. Like, you know, you really have to kind of buff into it. But as you buff it, it should get easier to buff. <laughs> So we are done this project and I really love how this turned out. I think my mom is going to love it. So we did this video from the standpoint of if you are a newbie, there are things that you may need to know before you get started. And I hope that we covered a lot of things that will help you get started on your first project, whether it's a chair, whether it's a stool, or whether it's a simple upholstery project. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I will see you in the next video and be sure to check out the 10 common furniture painting mistakes because guess what? You are going to want to know what they are before you start your next project. All right, guys, I'll see you next video.